Hello and welcome to the Eurowhat, episode number 102 for the week of January 11th, 2021. I'm Ben Smith, and I'm joined today by Mike McComb. Hey, Mike. Hello. We are a pair of Americans trying to make sense of the Eurovision Song Contest, and this week we'll be talking about the news. Uh, but but not that news. Not that news. No, um, no, 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 no. It has been a particularly news news heavy half of a week. Just a half. Yeah, I guess it has only like, been half a week. Like, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about so much longer. Uh, uh, yeah, no, Lemon, it's Tuesday. Oh, goodness. Uh, but yeah. A lot has happened in the United States for the, like, if you somehow have not seen the news. As I said a few times last year, I'm glad that we have this little space where we get to focus on very silly things Mm -hmm. and have real hot opinions on selection season instead of just sort of the general state of the nation. Let's just kick things off with Greece. Yes. When we last left them, Stefania was pulling one song name out of a glass jar of five and promising more to come. And it turns out that's the only song we're ever going to hear pulled from that jar. Uh, mm-hmm. Because uh, Greece has announced that Stefania will sing Last Dance in Rotterdam. Final recordings took place over the weekend. A video is expected sometime in February. I recall reading somewhere that apparently it started as a ballad. And I assume that means it did not finish as one. So that will be something to keep an eye out for. Hmm. I wonder if that means that it's kind of doing the Chrysalide Vola thing where it starts out as one song and although is ralph siegel part of the dream team i don't think that's correct. Uh, no no <laughs> I, I feel like i feel like philip kirkorov has like a very strict rule for his assistant to not let ralph siegel's calls through <laughs> ignore that number looking forward to that so we're we are up to two no three song titles that three song titles of. yes although just I do, one song I... yeah <laughs> Uh, Also coming out last week was a little bit more information about France's selection process, and they've assembled a jury, and it has a lot of—it's actually a really well-formed jury. Some of the participants include uh, Eurovision alumni, so Amir from 2016, Duncan Lawrence from 2019, you might have heard of him, uh, Natasha St. Pierre from 2001. Jean-Paul Gaultier, the fashion designer, who's had a relationship with Eurovision. Uh, I believe he did Conchita's gown for 2014, and uh, I know he's worked with Dana International and probably a few other people uh, throughout the years. And Shemaine Badi, uh, who was one of the finalists in the last national selection that France did back in 2019 19. yes yeah 2019. Uh, we had like a one like we, we, we had yeah we had, yeah it 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 does uh and then uh, a handful of other performers and celebrities uh from uh the french scene there are 12 songs that are competing most of them are on spotify and we have a french spotify playlist uh that you can find on our spotify profile we also have it linked in our show notes and the way it's supposed to work is they'll do all the performances there'll be a televote and the top seven songs plus one wild card that's selected by the jury will go through to a super final where it's uh, another vote that's a 50 50 split between public vote and the jury which seems like a lot i had assumed that like the initial selection of the seven from the 12 was happening before any of the televised portion Oh, interesting. Yeah, the article that I read didn't indicate that, but there's nothing to indicate that it wouldn't be that. I mean, it right. makes a like the, lot the, more the, I, sense. It, it makes a lot more sense. It makes sense that, like, okay, we're not going to air 12 songs being performed, then do a round of voting, then have a super final of eight. Unless they don't have the eight perform again, which that happens. I think that's the way that Norway does it, where they cut it down to four and then it's just voting opened again. But the way I have it noted right now is it's real weird. But, it's real uh, weird, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the other complicating factor is they still don't know when this is going to happen. Uh, it's Tebe Day. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> the French broadcaster is insistent that they are going to have this national final. Originally, it was supposed to be in some city outside of Paris. And they're just like, nope, we're going to do it in a TV studio in paris uh because of 
life. <laughs> and uh, Yeah. Well, and also, if they don't hold it in Paris, how are they going to have the Eiffel Tower in the background? How will we mm-hmm. know it's France? Oh, maybe it'll just be at the Eiffel Tower. Maybe they'll just have to do it outdoors. And it's like it will uh, be on be top the, of the Arc de Triomphe. That seems like something where they would, would have needed to get permits for that by now. So this may be happening on TikTok. Uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll just randomly uh, <laughs> shoot the videos on their phones and like try to hide everything. It's like a uh, private YouTube stream. By. Exactly. Yeah. So still waiting on details for that. I believe they were initially aiming for some time in January, but we're already halfway through the month, so uh, they better get on that soon. France is figuring stuff out. Later this week, Finland will be announcing their artists for UMK. Uh, there are going to be seven artists competing, and they will all be announced on uh, Wednesday. One song will be dropping over the next two weeks of weekdays. So the first one will drop on Thursday. The last one will drop on Friday, uh, January 21st. So a little treat at lunchtime for uh, everybody who's following the finish process. I just thought to myself, each song will be like a little salmiak as a treat. There. <laughs> Which... Salmiak is the finished licorice with like the ammonium salt. You either like it or you do not. I think that's most licorice. Uh. (laughs) My name is Christer. Kristen. Christer. Christer. Okay. Another one that we'll be hearing from shortly, uh, Sweden. Sweden in the past week or so keeps dropping guest hosts left and right for this year's Melfest. Uh, from what I can tell, Christer Bjorkman is going to be our primary host, but every, every week it's just going to be a cavalcade of guest hosts, including the most recent announcement, uh, Pernilla, who sang Piccadilly Circus in the 80s. Hmm. Yeah. And then the the other exciting note is that we will have an official running order on Wednesday. My spreadsheet will appreciate that. I'm looking forward to that one. Just just to remind myself who all is in the mix. We have the Mamas. We have some some people who pop up every couple of years, like Arvin Garna. How are we stacking the deck this year? How are we arranging this? That's something to look forward to this week. And then uh, Melfest will be... Wow, Melfest is getting started in just a couple of weeks. Yes. It's, oh, goodness. It's almost uh, here. Yes. Also happening in less than two weeks uh, from uh, when this episode drops... Uh, Israel will be announcing their selection. So uh, we said last week that voting was open for their selection. That was incorrect. Voting doesn't open until uh, next Tuesday because the songs are uh, officially dropping uh, next Monday, uh, January 18th. <laughs> I'm like, wait, they're they're officially dropping next Monday, but like we've they're just like hanging out there in the open. Yeah, that, that was what I was going to say, where it wouldn't be a Eurovision season without leaks. Again, it just kind of takes you back to 2019 when Can, uh, Israel's broadcaster, really had a firm hold on the communication channels of everything that was happening. So, yeah, the three songs that are up for consideration for Eden are called La La Love, Set Me Free, and Ooh La La. And the leaks, there, there could be some tweaks between now and then from uh, what, what is floating out there and what the final versions are going to sound like we thought we'd talk about the three songs as they are right now uh the first one we will talk about is la la love I want to like this one. This one feels like the thumb is on the scale for it a little bit more than the other two. Mm. But talking about how there could be tweaks before things come out, like I cannot get past the first part of the chorus of this one. (laughs) Like, like I was already sort of tensing up during the first verse where I'm just like, oh no, this is going to be a song about the times we live in now. Mm -hmm. And isn't it sad that I haven't gotten to go out partying, which I am not against that at Eurovision 2021 because, again, I want things to be up-tempo. I want us to to be celebrating rather than commiserating. Mm -hmm. But I cannot with love is my disease. I want to infect my generation. Just like, Israel, read the room. Uh, Yeah, I mean, in, in, in my notes, in all caps, I have, this chorus is insane. The specific thing I have in my notes is like, I am not here for herd immunity of love. No. Oh no. How do you stage this in a way that doesn't bum everybody out? Like 
either everybody in the room is going to be like trying to dance while also listening to the message of this song. It's like, ah, it's going, yeah, ah. it's, yeah. Or if it ends up having to be a remote performance based on whatever scenario your vision ends up going with, that's going to be. That's super just that's just going to be a real bummer. That reminds us of of we're not allowed to leave the house. Please, please stop. I'm trying to think of another song that was so on the nose about the current moment that the song was about. You think of like Jamala's 1944, which was arguably very pointed about what things were like in 2016, but it was connecting it to a similar historic event. So there was that kind of not trapped in the amber of that year, Mm -hmm. if, if that makes sense. But yes, yeah, I... I really hope that we aren't going to end up with 40 songs about the year 2020 because I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, no, thank no, you. No. no. The other thing that this reminds me of, and it's another thing with Israel in recent history, is that before the 2019 contest, there was going to be a show airing on Israeli TV mm-hmm. about a suicide bomber at a, at a large international song contest that looked eerily like Eurovision. And like the EBU and I think Yano Lassan had to like come in and be like, hi, guys, this is in poor taste. You can air this later, but not now. Mm-hmm. And this is just another area where I'm just like, okay. Well, I was about to say this is a different sense of humor, but like, I don't think that this is being played as a joke. Yeah, and I don't think this is necessarily in poor taste. I think it's just kind of more catering to a marketplace that may not necessarily want this product yeah, <laughs> at this time. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would weirdly be fine with this song a year from now when we've had actual immunization happen. Yeah. Like, I, or... would be able, I would be able to more favorably think about, I don't need no medication. Yeah. Like, I think if this were outside of the current context, like, like I, I think it's really is a case of, like, too soon. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. No, this is absolutely yeah. just too soon. It's just so on the nose. But it's got a good beat and you can sort of dance to it. So... Seven points. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> Anything else about this one? That that is it for this one. Just just like I cannot. I okay. Cannot. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Apologies to this song, but also, yeah. <laughs> wait like five minutes. Wait five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the next one, uh, possibly on on that same wavelength, is "Set Me Free." Set me free. don't know what to do with this one yeah like it's it's fine the baseline's really good the baseline is good i feel like it does a good job with the key change at the end oh no. but <laughs> also oh <laughs> uh, but, i have well, it as but, an unearned key change okay but, okay uh, okay that, like that, that is a fight I, that i'm willing to lose well i mean on the other hand like i did feel like by the time it got to the key change like well this is going to happen and also i felt like at that point it, we had kind of lost the plot from the first part of the song oh yes because, like, we started in one place, and, like, by the time we get to the key change, we're in, like, a completely different time zone. Yeah, there is no cohesive story of this. Like, it, it really does feel kind of like a collection of half hooks and mm-hmm. just kind of throwing it all together. Really, it's reminding me a lot of Vincent Bueno's entry for Austria last year. Yes. Where it's, like, all of these hoots and clicks and ticks and pop music not quite cliches somebody read that book at the library about writing a pop song that you get to the chorus as soon as possible because like this one immediately yeah but it, it's like the whole song is just kind of ha- like starts at a five works its way up to a seven and just kind of hangs out in that mid range like it, it, it's just not going anywhere like it also feels like this is a song that they would love for it to open up the show but they're in the second half of the first semifinal, so it's not happening then. Mm-hmm. It could happen if it qualifies to the grand final and gets into the first half, but you gotta qualify first. But you so, need to make like, it there. Yeah, and like the first semifinal, like there are a lot of powerhouses in there, so I don't, I don't think a half-hearted effort is going to be enough to get through. Okay, any other thoughts about this one? No. Uh- <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, I mean, like, I, I have thoughts about it, but like, it's it's more of in just sort of looking at these three as the options. Let's talk about Ooh La La first. 
What did, what did you make of Ooh La La? Okay, so it reminded me of one of the entries from the 2019 French selection. Uh, funny funny that it's coming up again in this episode. But uh, yeah, there was a song, uh, Pour Aqui, that just had this kind of like party vibe. Like there, just the cadence of the song uh, was matching up really nicely. And I can sort of get the sense that it's weaving together a lot of the characteristics of inspirations for eden but mm-hmm. i don't think it's really showcasing eden like it, it feels like sort of uh how american idol contestants can sometimes get shoehorned into like pop song archetypes and mm-hmm. like she's just kind of changing costumes throughout the song but it's just like oh yeah we don't actually know who eden is which makes no sense to me like she she <laughs> she is her own person and i think she mm-hmm. demonstrated that very clearly last year what do you think of this one feels like all these are sort of taking various bits and pieces of becker Lebe from last year mm-hmm. and sort of taking them off in their own directions and ooh la la is doing the thing that becker Lebe did of doing like three to four languages quickly clicking between gears and hopping from one to the next to the next but it doesn't have anything to say it's kind of weird in just like how surface level it is mm-hmm. and like my main note is that like this feels like something that would be like an album interlude stretched out to like a full three minutes because like i think of these three this one was the shortest of the demos mm. i like the vibe of it i like the mood of it but the more i sit with it it's just kind of empty calories and like yes. it's pop, like pop music is it's fine if that is the case but like i don't feel like this has the legs to get all the way to rotterdam I do think that this track is the most interesting of the mm-hmm. three oh, yeah, for I, a, lot, I agree. a lot of the I reasons agree. that you were saying. But I think if it were to win and then go to the semifinals, like it would just get buried in a field of 17. It's interesting, but not in a way that works at Eurovision. Yeah, like it, it's not it's not sticky. It's not sticky enough. And I think, was this the one in the uh, YouTube clip of her like driving around in that car, like singing along with tracks where she flubbed the lyrics? Yes. Yeah, which is just like, ooh, you just, yeah, just like if you, you could have yeah, like, shot that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do the take where like you nail the lyrics on this one. Yeah. So I'm just disappointed. <laughs> I caught that too. Where I'm just like, oh, is this is this not the one that that she's feeling the most? Mm, yeah there, there is that element too so these are the three it's gonna be one of these i think that ooh la la is is interesting but not in a way that's gonna work at eurovision so i like i think if if that's the one that wins they're not gonna make it to the final like would call it now that feels like a tough sell a very tough sell yeah i mean i think of the three ugh, set me for is maybe the one that has the most that they can work with yeah like in terms the, of staging and just not bumming everybody out yeah yeah is is, is like okay so like setting ooh la la aside uh mm. la la love as i have said cannot with the chorus no thank mm. you that leaves me with set me free and i i agree that they they can do stuff with it i yeah. i still think that it's like generic pop song number three but they will have two months to really hammer to, to like hammer zhuzh it and yeah and figure it out yeah, so hopefully, even though it's supposed to be like the final version is coming out on January 18th, it's not the final, final version. Like, please, please, please fix this. Fi- so. Final <laughs> underscore final underscore use this one underscore V7. Yes. <laughs> Best of luck to Israel. Again, voting opens up on January 19th for these songs that were that will be dropping next Monday. Mm-hmm. The other big piece of news that dropped today in particular is Norway. One of the big things kicking off this weekend is the Melody Grand Prix. Uh, Stig Carlson, the music director, in a recent interview says that there are four standout entries, which apologies to all of the entries that are not those four standouts. Wow, that's like, what, 22 yep. other songs? Yeah, it's like 22 other songs. Have to like, sit through. <laughs> apologies to you. Yeah. Stig Carlson just thinks that you're garbage. To be fair, the article that I read about that, it, he wasn't quoted directly as saying that, and it may have been a case of he gave examples of four strong entries, <laughs> so... He there, wrote there, about there, four there entries in the email and didn't write about any of the others, so the person mm-hmm. reading this assumed... Yeah, that there's only four. Yeah, uh, and then today, 
Uh, the Songs for Heat 1 and the six auto qualifiers announced, which just to quickly recap what Norway is doing this year, we're going to have five rounds of heats. Then we're going to have a second chance round, and then we're going to have a final. So this week's songs are out. Uh, we have Stina Talling's Elevate, Jorn's Faith, Bloody Faith, BD Bell's Playing with Fire, and Blaza Mafian's Let Loose. Mike, have you listened to the songs? I have. I have also listened to the songs. They're fine. Yeah, wh- which one do you think is going to make it out? Like, I really have nothing to say about any of these four. Like, they're all, like you said, they're just fine. They're fine, like, although I will say BD Bell's Playing With Fire is doing some interesting stuff, and it's growing on me. Really? Yes. Huh. I thought it was unremarkable. Okay. Like, it, it, in well, the sense that, like, I have no remarks about it. Well, it feels like... Also, it like I've been listening to a bunch of Jesse Ware lately, and I feel like it's doing some of the same stuff that she's doing right now. Mm. But like, mm. I also want to see what the live vocal is like because that that one I feel like absolutely, if the vo- live vocal is not good, no. Mm-hmm. The one that I'm interested in seeing live is "Let Loose," just because the track itself is it it's a dance track, mm-hmm. and like there aren't that many lyrics, so it's just going to be all performance, and I am interested to see how that's going to work yes and like i i like the idea of the blasmafian of it being like a very brass driven dance sort of a deal Mm -hmm. but also if i want like a brass driven dance sort of a deal at eurovision i want it to come from the balkans apologies to nordic brass artists but yeah but 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 i (laughs) we booked someone else for the wedding but but like but, but like i know where the good brass music comes from and i feel like i have to talk myself into liking let loose I like it in theory, but then I listen to it. I'm like, it's fine. And you guys left 20 whole seconds on the table. That's a brave choice. You could do like another yeah. chorus. This one's different, but I'm not sure it's different in an effective way. But we'll we'll see mm-hmm. how the audience responds to it on Saturday. Yeah. Yes. And then just from like a couple listens. And again, like the live vocal could be great. Uh, Elevate feels like like if if uh, Set Me Free was generic pop song number three, this is generic pop song number seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Faith Bloody Faith. I had better see like a Lichtenstein's GDP worth of pyro on that stage for this song. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote down it's kind of heavy metal by way of a mighty wind. In terms yes. Of, like, oh, lyrics. that's su- that's such a good description of it. But but then doesn't that make it Spinal Tap since it's Christopher it's, Guest? But <laughs> it's it's very Spinal Tap. It, it yeah. it's that specific. It's it's like it's Eurovision friendly metal, but not in yeah. like not in the way that I like it. Although yeah. the more I listen to it, the more it grows on me. But I don't know. Apologies to these songs, yeah, um, especially because uh, how they're going to be upstaged by the auto qualifiers. Oh, that they're going to present curb stomp. So. <laughs> I feel like they should have like waited a day before giving us the auto qualifier list just to let those four songs have their day in the sun. Because mm. as soon as the internet saw that one of the songs being performed this Saturday is from Kano, it was over. Yep. There's a lot of discourse happening right now about is it too soon? Shouldn't this be a space for new artists? I don't care. Like Kano's album last year was fantastic and they're still doing stuff together and like they had the most uh televote points a couple mm-hmm. years ago. They would like their jury points, please. Yeah, like they they are technically the reigning televote champions. So, uh if Norway is serious about wanting to win Eurovision, I think this is a very smart choice. I think the broadcasters would prefer to have alumni and people who like this is not their first rodeo Mm -hmm. as part of the process, just in case things get very weird from a technical execution perspective where it's like, okay, this is somebody who's already been to Eurovision. They already know like all the ins and outs of what that process is like. And if things need to change, like they don't have to be like newbies like yes. if they can avoid newbies in the experience i i think that's the goal yes i completely agree as we keep getting more and more selections where it's like oh a lot of familiar names that's weird uh the more i think about them i'm like oh yeah no they want people who know how this is supposed to go so that they mm. don't have to spend all of their time explaining how normally it would be like this but right. this year we're doing this mm-hmm. i'm very excited to hear what kano's monument here sounds like especially since they've said that it's like a slightly more grown-up version of spirit in the sky okay yeah like that that could go one that could go a number of different ways but like yeah just seeing the progression they made from spirit in the sky to the singles they were releasing in the very long lead up to their album last year and seeing how they were developing and growing and figuring figuring out their voice as a trio Mm -hmm. i'm very excited to see like what 
the next step is for them. I agree. There's another song happening on Saturday, Ticks Out of the Dark. Reading through the the Norwegian press release for all this this morning, seeing everybody's credentials is great because like Ticks has multiple number ones on Spotify Norway. Like that's that's a different metric than we usually see. Yeah. Especially especially looking in this list and especially looking at the selection as a whole. Yeah, it does look like they're bringing in a variety of performers. Kind kind of the Australia decides model in a way. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. Uh Stavanger Kamaratene will be performing Childhood Streets. This this appears to be a man band that has formed themselves from a from people who have done a lot of things like Norwegian Idol, X Factor, uh Star Wars, The Voice. And then one of them also did an ABBA tribute show. Huh. Yeah. There was like a thing in quotations when I was reading the thing. I was like, what? V. Elsker ABBA, thank you for the music. <laughs> and it, I was like, what is that? Is that a different reality competition? No, it's not. It was just like a stage show. Oh, okay. It's, it's a stage show that's probably more of a review than like a Mamma Mia. Okay. They will be performing Childhood Streets a couple weeks from now. Kajio Road will be performing Feel Again. She was on The Voice of Norway 2017. Atle Peterson uh, will be performing World on Fire in February, which he has a whole bunch of credits. Like, he has done all of the shows. He's, mm. He was on X Factor in 2010. He was on Star Wars in 2013. He was on The Hit in 2014. He was on Shall We Dance in 2011. So he's done the full circuit. Okay. Closing out the auto qualifiers, we have Rain Alexander, fan favorite from last year, with eyes wide open. And, like, in the promo photo this time, he's kind of dressed like the Penguin from batman oh, no. <laughs> yeah because like last time he was dressed like a viking this time like the look screams the penguin so i'm here for it excellent yeah i yeah. i was very happy to see him on the auto qualifier list because i think he was owed an apology for all of the shenanigans last year all of that gets started on saturday uh at 1 50 p.m eastern uh, let's see the other exciting process happening this weekend. Uh, Lithuania, Pabanum is now. We have song titles. I am very intrigued by whatever the group's discotheque is. Just mm-hmm. that's a very good title for a pop song. Mm-hmm. No further people appear to have dropped out, but anything can happen in the rest of this week. Although the thing with Lithuania's process, uh, that I mean, I think it's already kind of not COVID proof, but the Saturday shows, except for the final last year, they were all pre-taped anyway. Like it was never a live show. So it's, it seems like they're already have a game plan for how to produce this in a way that's going to be safe for all of the participants and still prov- uh, producing a good show. Like, I, uh, I don't know if they're planning on having an audience for the performances. I would guess probably not, but I've not seen anything one way or the other. This should not actually change how the show is produced for them, uh, which, which will be nice. So, <laughs> And if you want to watch Heat 1 of that, that will be Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern time here in the U.S. If you head to our website, eurowhat.com slash calendar, uh, that'll take you to a page that has all of this information, playlists, everything, uh, and a Google Calendar that you can actually download and get uh, access to all of those links and uh, updates in your own personal calendar. So that's super handy. Yeah, the last thing that we wanted to talk about was an article that dropped last week about what plan Eurovision may be going with uh, as May approaches. So with a lot of these selection shows that are happening, there's not going to be a live audience. Uh, Melfest isn't going to have one. UMK won't. Uh, Dora announced that the show will not have a live audience. So it'll be a lot like the Danish final last year, which could be interesting. Which in hindsight, you know, really should have been a sign. Yeah, yeah. So much about that last weekend of the before times. Yes. Here in the States, like the Grammy Awards uh, have been postponed. They've been moved to March 14th. And uh, Dr. Fauci, who's been leading the coronavirus information on a national level here in the United States, he floated the idea recently that live music might be back in the fall uh so i don't know yeah. may might be a little maybe optimistic. yeah like I, we're, we're still gonna be wearing masks while we enjoy the live music but live music might be back sets a backer who is the executive producer for the dutch uh broadcasters uh for this year's contest said that there's going to be a decision on what the primary plan will be for eurovision sometime in early to mid-february like in the next couple of weeks plan a is still the dream but 
it's i'm not sure how yeah like that's I, going to work. I i that feels real rosy to me the other piece of news is that they have set aside like a hotel block for the delegations but that just feels like covering your bases for for both plans a and b Yes. And and that was one where it was just like, oh, well, they block that like as soon as Rotterdam was announced as a 2021 host city, because that's what you do if you're a Because that's what planning. you do when you're hosting like, a large scale <laughs> event. <laughs> yeah, it's like you lock that down. Uh, just to review what the four plans are, there's plan A, which is everything is normal. You've got 20,000 people crowded into the Rotterdam Ahoy as other people are singing at you. Plan A is plan anxiety attack. Yep. Uh, plan B... <laughs> Plan B is reduced capacity, so social distancing. People are still singing at you, but it's a little bit safer. And I think at this point, Plan B is best case scenario. Um, I'm making direct eye contact with someone as I put a third mask on top of my face. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it would probably be, I would guess, like maybe one third capacity, but that's still going to be like 6,000 people. So um, it, it, it's a lot. Uh, plan C is where uh, some delegations may have to be remote uh, and there will still be a limited audience. So that's kind of a compromise plan where it's uh, sort of what Junior Eurovision was doing, even though Junior Eurovision was kind of more like fully remote. There were a couple of delegations that were uh, in Poland in person performing. And then there's Plan D where there's no audience. Everything is remote. Rotterdam Ahoy is just turned into a big echoey studio where all of the video feeds are sent in and the hosts are just kind of presenting be like and here's Iceland and then hits play on the VCR so just we yeah. just wheels out the TV that the sub had yep yep and yeah so and it's all kind of based on like vaccine rollout even though artists won't necessarily be required to get vaccinated neat which is um, which is a fun choice that I'm fine with yeah, yeah. So there's like, it's uh, also tr treading into the area of Eurovision not being a political contest. So there's just a lot of factors here. Which plan do you think is going to end up being selected at this point? If, if you had to guess as a armchair expert ep epidemiologist. <laughs> at this point, like, I feel like A is not going to happen. A should, well, A could happen. A, I would not feel comfortable with A. I would feel like weirdly anxious sitting on my couch watching that. Yeah, that's a factor that I didn't even consider is like, what's it going to be like for the home audience that's watching? And oof. I feel like the image for people at home, currently vaccine stuff isn't going great in the States. Like if it's not going great globally, the image of like a full, like a full, full stadium of mm -hmm. people doesn't feel great to me. No. So like I, at this point, I would say B is the goal. B is the goal. I feel like it's going to be B or C. I think that's right. I think we may be beyond D at this point but i yeah. have a feeling it may end up being c as a technicality where it's like well the dutch delegation will be able to be there and probably mm -hmm. the belgian uh just France, yeah like the, the immediate like, neighbors yes the and... immediate neighbors who feel fine coming over and yeah like i feel it's gonna be some combination of c and d and like there's something that feels relatively equalizing of if if some nations aren't able to come it really should only be a handful of nations in the in the Ahoy. Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but uh, like even even B uh, is just kind of even though time is just completely stretched and like taffy at this point. Like mm -hmm. May is not that far away. And May, it, like, yeah, May. Everything is... would have to be ramped up like a hundred to two hundred percent of where it is right now. I think yeah. for for that to be a realistic scenario. Yeah, like that that is where I am sitting is like I would rather them focus on how can we have the best possible iteration of something between C and D rather than try to go for something A or B level and have it still feel incredibly unsafe and not be a great image. Mm hmm. I don't want your vision to be a super spreader event, like the last mm -hmm. big super spreader event. And it's just. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh <laughs> I think this is also being like tempered by the U.S. perspective, where vaccine rollout is not going well at all. Isn't going real good. Um, but like, I don't, I don't know, listeners elsewhere, how is vaccine rollout going where you are? Like, it, like, could we, could we actually be more optimistic about this? Let me let me put it this way: the U.S. contingent, we will probably not be in Netherlands for at least eighteen months. Yeah, <laughs> at at best. But at uh, best. yeah, if things are if things are better where you are, please let us know. As I learned in Duolingo yesterday, who is Dezorg? 
How is the yeah. health care? <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode of The Euro What. Thanks for listening. The Euro What podcast is hosted by Ben Smith. That's me. And Mike McComb. That's me. You can subscribe to The Euro What on the podcast app of your choice. When you subscribe, leave us a review. Let us know how we're doing and help other Eurovision fans find us. Show notes are in the description of this episode or on our website at eurowhat.com. If you'd like to contact us, we're at Euro what on Twitter and Instagram, or you can email eurowhatpodcast at gmail.com. We'll be back next week to try and make sense of what's new in Eurovision.